guys, Rosie with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be day 11 of the 31 days of tarot. This one, this prompt is my um, five oracle decks that I wanna work more with in 2019. So I just had a look at my shelf and these are the ones that popped out. So the first one is Notes from the Universe on Abundance by Mike Dooley. I've had this one for a while. It's a beautiful deck. The cards are just like landscape imagery. Gorgeous, right? And then the back of each card will have like a positive prompt. It'll just kind of give you something really, it's a real positive deck. So it just gives you something really neat to think about. I think the reason why I don't use it much is because of this. But when you really go through the deck, it's really cool. Um, it just gives you, it's, it's more of like a meditation deck, I would say. <laughs> um, keep like, keep your end results general. Everything else is just a how, like it just gives you stuff to think about. I've always used this deck for the aesthetic of just how gorgeous the, the pictures are, but there's more to it than that. So this is one I want to kind of incorporate in my, my client readings, especially like when I am closing them out, maybe giving them a positive message or just a visual to think about. So we'll see. But that's what this one, that's what this one is. Um, okay. Next is the Sacred Symbols for Divination and Meditation. This is by Marcella Kroll. This one is a cool deck. It's super simple. It's just symbols. And really, it's a super, super intuitive deck. It has a guidebook that comes with it. But, you know, sometimes you can just look at the imagery and just get your own, like, burden basket. I mean, I think of stresses and, like, piling everything into it. Butterfly for transformation and change. The pyramid however that you know you would associate that so it's really cool like it's just a lot of symbols very simplistic but I just don't reach for this one I don't know why I think because <laughs> because it's just so simple and you know the artwork is pretty cool but I, I think I like the backs more than I do the artwork but this is one I definitely want to play with more so we'll see and that is the Sacred Symbols Oracle. Next up is Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. This deck has almost, I almost sold this, this deck twice. <laughs> it was on my list of decks to get rid of. <clears throat> I have to use the guidebook for it. So I think that's one of the reasons why I don't reach out for it often. Um, because I do tend to have to use the guidebook and I just don't like doing the guidebook when I'm doing client readings especially because everything is like you know you got to read it and it just doesn't happen intuitively some of them are I guess but I guess I just don't use it enough to appreciate it so this is definitely one of those cards or one of those decks that I want to play with more because when you really look at the imagery and you read the, the guidebook messages, it's really, really insightful. It's just so hard for me, at least for me personally, to connect with this deck when I'm doing client readings on the go. So that is the wisdom of the hidden realms. But for some reason, and I know that that's a sign, <laughs> for some reason, I have not sold this deck. So it's supposed to be in my collection. Next is the Animal Spirit Oracle. This is by Kim Kranz. <coughs> um, she's the creator of the Wild Unknown Tarot. I'm surprised that I don't pull, with, pull out this deck more often. But again, it's one of those decks that I have to use the guidebook. So you have like, obviously the animal. But if you want to get the intuitive message... If it doesn't come to you intuitively, you're reaching for the guidebook. And I know for me, I'm reaching for the guidebook most of the time. And so I think that's the only reason why I get so turned off by this deck because of that. 
If it had like a prompt, you know, that would make it easier, but it doesn't. So, and, but the cards, they're beautiful. I love her artwork. I really, really do. So of course, you know, I'm never going to give this deck away, but I just wish that I didn't have to, um, I wish I didn't have to go to the guidebook for it, but I do. <laughs> so I think that's probably, if, if there's any deck that I have to use the guidebook for, that's a deck that I just don't pull out often. Next one is the Moon Oracle. This is the, the final one in my list. Sorry, I don't want to knock over my cards. But the Moon Oracle, let the phases of the moon guide your life. This one has a really different feel to it. The cards have a certain way. And I haven't played with them enough to know how it works. But as you can see, they're color coordinated. So it's for a reason. You get every um, cycle of the moon on each of the, the colors. So pretty sure the colors mean different energies or um, elements. But like I said, I haven't played with this enough to know. So I just looked through them and kept them in order for the most part. But again, it's by the same creator as the Elemental Tarot. So I just love the artwork. <laughs> but this is one I really, really want to play with more. There have been um, YouTube creators that have um, created videos surrounding how to read with this deck. So I want to watch those videos more and kind of get a feel and do and maybe come up with a specific reading where I can use this deck so that I know I'm using it because I'm, I don't want to get rid of it. I love it too much. It's too, it's, I love Caroline Smith's. I love the artwork. I love just, I love it. So I'm, I wouldn't get rid of it, but <laughs> I need to have a purpose for a deck like this, you know? So maybe it just takes a certain type of a reading or whatnot, but that is my top five Oracle decks that I want to work with more in 2019. Thank you guys for watching.